Welcome to the Shema Podcast, the podcast for the perplexed, where Torah insights intertwine through personal stories as well as interviews with leading Torah scholars demonstrate the empowering qualities of Torah and mitzvot. For more great Torah learning through Torch, the Torah Outreach Center of Houston, go to torchweb.org. Now to the show. My friends, thank you for joining me once again on the Shema Podcast. One of the things that I used to be really challenged with was those moments when you have to wait. It was so aggravating. Doctor's offices, grocery lines. You know, I didn't verbalize this, but I know subconsciously I was thinking to myself, the audacity of all these people around me. I mean, here I am letting them live in my world and they don't know that I'm a busy man, that they should accommodate my schedule. The nerve. This is something obviously that has improved tremendously over the years as I started learning Torah and and really attempting to integrate these ideas in my mind. But I'll tell you something that I have discovered in the last three or four months that has made those moments the most meaningful moments in my life. And also ones where now I look forward to and relish those opportunities. So one of the things that happened to me earlier this year was I had learned this idea of going out and doing Kiddush Hashem, bringing honor to Hashem's name, and especially now since, you know, I'm over the last three or four years, when I'm out in public, I'm wearing a yarmulke, I'm wearing tzitzit. People clearly know that I'm Jewish. I represent Hashem, His Torah, and all of you guys. And obviously, I want to reflect well on you as well to the outside world. So I had this idea on my mind and my wife had asked me to go to the grocery store to get some items for Shabbos. And this idea was on my mind. And when I got out of the car in the parking lot to go inside, I said, all right, Hashem, show me an opportunity where I can do Kiddush Hashem, where I can bring honor to your name. And as I was walking into the grocery store, what I clearly saw was an elderly woman standing near the driver's side rear wheel, just staring, not moving. So I quickly walked over to her and I asked, ma'am, is everything okay? And she said, no. She said, my glasses fell off and rolled under the car and I can't see anything. I was like, okay, I got it. And I got on my knees and hands and looked under and sure enough, her glasses had literally rolled right to the middle of the car. I mean, this woman at her more mature age would have never been able to get on her knees and hands and then reach out and crawl around the car enough to grab those glasses. So I did so and I cleaned them off and I, I hand them back to her and she put them on and had this big smile and thanked me. And she said, I can't tell you how scary it is when you can't see where you're going. And I said, ma'am, I get it. I've had many days like that. And then I went inside and ran that errand. It was just like the most incredible experience. One of the things that used to drive me crazy when I traveled with sales guys is when they would check their luggage. I'd be like, guys, really? Come on, amateur hour. And, but what I found now that I've been keeping kosher and I'm I'm religious now, I found that it's always amateur hour for me when I travel. I mean, you pack your, your suit and your clothes and then you get your workout clothes, but then you start throwing in your food and your talus and filling and the, the books you're studying. I'm always going amateur hour. I'm always checking my luggage. So this time I, I, my flight gets delayed. I get in late. I'm exhausted. It's been a long day. I go down to get the, my luggage. And of course, what I would typically do is you stare at the sign where the lady promised you, this is where your flight is going to drop off its bags, but you don't see your flight lit up yet. And they keep telling you, well, it'll come. And then when they finally do put up your flight number, now you're just staring at the baggage carousel, just where's my suitcase? I want my suitcase so I can get out of here. So I found myself in the same situation again. And one of the things I will tell you I'm, I'm really avoiding doing is this impulsive act of grabbing my iPhone and scrolling through it, looking at nonsense. You know, like, do I really need to look at my stocks? No, I don't. Do I need to read the news? No, nothing really positive there. There's nothing on that iPhone that's going to bring any enrichment to my life. Now, granted, one of the things we have now, which is so beautiful in all these situations, is we can plug in a podcast. 
you know, and I can listen to Rabbi Yokoff or Rabbi Ari Wolby or Rabbi Busco, you know, which is fantastic. But now when I'm out and about, I'm like, this gives me a different opportunity. I can do that when I'm in my car, when I'm totally sort of isolated. But now when I'm in these situations, I want to embrace these opportunities in a, in a way that I can't do when I'm driving in my car. So I said the same thing to myself as I was standing at the baggage carousel. I said, Hashem, give me an opportunity to do a Kiddush Hashem, to bring honor to your name, to do a mitzvah. And I looked around and immediately saw a man who looked quite distraught. And so I walked over, asked him if everything, everything was okay. And he said, no, he goes, he was an airport employee. And he said, I cannot find my wallet. I've been off my shift for two hours and I've looked everywhere and I cannot find my wallet. And he's like, so my wallet had my cash, it had my bus pass. And so I can't even get home. I'm so frustrated. So I asked him how much a a cab would cost to get him home. And he told me the number. And I realized too, that when I had bought some water at the store, when I got off my flight, normally I neatly, you know, fold the cash back up and stick in my wallet. But I remember the exact amount he needed was loosely put in my pocket. And I said, tell you what, I can help you out with that. And he said, no, no, sir, you don't understand. If, If someone sees me having a passenger, give me money, I'll lose my job. And I reached my hand in my pocket very discreetly, like I was going to do anyway. And I put the cash and tucked it in my palm. And I said, sir, I just want to shake your hand for helping me out and telling me where to get my bag. And I shook his hand and slipped the money into his hand. And he was so grateful. He was so thankful that I was there to get him out of such a bind. I can't imagine a long work day handling baggage and suitcases on an hourly basis. <laughs> and then you're stuck and you can't get home. But fortunately, I asked the right question of Hashem. I asked for that opportunity and I got it. And then recently, a dear friend of mine who lives in Israel but does business here, his business partner that normally deposits the checks in his bank account was also in Israel. So he asked me if if I could get those checks and deposit it in his bank account. And I said, of course, I would love to. So I go to the bank branch. And I haven't been in a bank branch, guys, in like, what, 10 years? I mean, we have apps now. Like, who goes into a bank branch, you know? And I go in there and there's a lot of people that go into bank branches because the line was ridiculous. When you walk into the bank branch, the tellers were on the left side. You had a a line going straight across to the right side of the the room and then making an L shape and just stretching along the the outside perimeter of this room. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. I'm, I'm standing in this line and it's going so slow. Like what types of transactions are these people doing? I think that same guy has been there since I walked in. But I did the same thing again. I decided just to ask Hashem to give me an opportunity to do Kiddush Hashem. And what ended up happening, I mean, literally as those words rolled off my tongue, I looked over, over to my left, out the two sets of glass doors that led to the outside, and I saw an elderly person on a walker. And I was like, fantastic. So I ran over and I opened the doors for this person so they could come through and they're walking. And I opened up the second set and the person was, of course, very appreciative. And when I got back, the people saw what I did. They told me, definitely get back in line where you were. And then that was over. But I'm still looking at this line like I got a lot more time here, Hashem. Give me another kiddush, Hashem. And what continued to happen, what ensued afterwards was one person after another, I'm not kidding you, with a walker or with a cane approaching the front doors of this bank. And I was able throughout this whole time period, be the doorman and go open up the doors, let them in, bring them in, welcome them to the bank. And it was just a fantastic experience. And before I knew it, it was my turn to go up to the bank teller's window and make the deposit for my friend. And I want to just add a little more color to this. I mean, because Hashem does not want us to sit idle. He does not put us in those situations to just stare at a wall or stare at our shoes or stare at our stupid iPhone looking at who knows what, right? He puts us there in those specific situations for a reason. And as a further thought to that, I was thinking about why did Hashem cause that elderly woman to drop her glasses and have them roll, not just fall on the ground, but go underneath the car where she could not retrieve them. Why? So that I would be able to get them for her and do an act of kindness for her. Why did Hashem cause that man to lose his wallet? 
after a hard day's work. Why? So I could be there to do an act of kindness and give him cab fare to get home. And why did Hashem bring me to the one bank branch where no one knows there's a banking app? Why? Because Hashem wanted to give me the opportunity to open the door for those people that are restricted to a walker or a cane. And the reason I want to share it like I always like to do things like this is because to remind me. So when I find myself in those situations that I transform them and from the most mundane, boring moments to the greatest opportunities to bring honor to Hashem, His Torah, our fellow Jews, and turn the mundane into the most meaningful experiences that we can have. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider supporting Torch so they can continue to spread Torah wisdom to the world by making a donation at torchweb.org and clicking Donate in the top right corner of the page. And if you would like to get in contact with our host with comments, suggestions for future topics of learning, or questions for him or his guest rabbis, you may email him at president at torchweb.org.